That's a good job. How could you not? Yeah. How could you not? Clean and presentable. That's all I ask. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. Yeah. Really. He said, "Yeah, but you." What do you think? We all said to guys and they did. The audience was going to be. What's the date today? It's the hardest thing for me to do. Just stick up and come here. Level. Yeah, really. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, October sixteenth meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the uh, clerk please uh, run through the uh, roll call? Uh, Chairman Harley here. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes, no. Mr. Oichel here. Mr. Hammer, no. Mr. Homicki here. Mr. Dean here. Mr. Allard, no. Mr. Edwards, no. Ms. Antoniak, no. Mr. Silver here. All right. Okay. So we have six participants. Everybody is. Uh, Everybody's participating in voting. All right, first item 3.1, a public hearing. Application 1997-18-Z. Al Sayed Omar seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.5.2, a home occupation. Please join us at the microphone. Mr. Chairman, I must uh, recuse myself from this hearing. All right, thank from you. From uh, this application, rather. All right, thank you, Tom. So there are five participating. Uh, this is a home occupation uh, at 189 Beverly Road. Yes. Would you take a few moments and describe what it is that you're proposing to do? Yes. Right. Uh, good evening, Good evening, every, everyone. Uh, my name is Al Sayed Omar. I have been a barber in Wethersfield for at least 12 years. My barber shop is located at a shopping center where Price Rye Grocery Store is. Uh, I have been always there by myself, even though the shop can accommodate for barbers, but I always was by myself. Uh, now I own the house uh, on Silas Zin Highway, the corner house with Beverly Road. It is very conveniently, conveniently located so that it can accommodate a business like this. I was told by a number of my customers that this house used to have a business for photography uh, 20 years ago, and it lasted 30 years and stopped or ceased to practice business about 20 years ago. And from my own guessing is that the house was built to accommodate the business of photography. From the way you see it, that the garage is very big enough. It's like 400 feet big. Uh, and next to it is a parking, the parking area, paved enough to uh, have parking for the customers who would come to the photography, uh, for the photography business. So my house is right on the corner of Silas Zin and Beverly Road. Uh, across the street from me are all businesses, and next to me on the other corner of the, uh, of the street is a business, hair salon, that they give me a little support. They support me to, to be there. And also my next door neighbor, who will be uh, next to my parking space, give me a letter of support. And the second neighbor also next to that, they give me a letter of support. So all the all two neighbors next to my parking and a neighbor across the street who has a hair salon, they all give me letters of support. Uh, <clears throat> I always <clears throat> been quite right, uh, uh, run a quiet business. 12 years I've been in town, nobody ever heard about me anything uh, negative. And uh, so my house is big enough to uh, have such business. Uh, the house is about, uh, about 10,000 square feet lot, and the building is about a little, little bit less than uh, 1,100 square feet. So I have about 9,000 square feet of empty land, enough to, enough to have parking for the customers who would come. So um, I think, really, uh, this is a very good location to have a, biz a business like that, and if Somebody like me cannot have it on a such location on Silas Dean Highway, a very busy street like that. I don't think anybody can have it anywhere else in Wethersfield. And I think I said I said what I need to say. If you have any questions, I will. All right, thank you. Thank you. Rich? Um, what did you have in mind for days and hours of operation? I would like to keep my same hours. I open from 8.30 uh, a.m. to 6 p.m. And every day, uh, but Monday off. 
And Sunday, I open from 10 to 4. Sunday from 10 to 4. And I close Monday. Okay. Would it be just you? Just me. And I see you, you show parking kind of on the west side of your property. Was your plan to take that white fence down? I will take part of it. I will yeah, because, I mean, it, it, it looks like it's, it would be really hard for people to routinely get in and out of there with the, the amount of fence that you have there. No, I will be... take part of it, or I, I may even take the whole of it, whole of it out okay. to make it easy for I would like to make the customer easy to come in and easy to get out. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it looked like it was tight going in. It looked like there was enough room once you got in there, but... Right. It it's for now. Difficult. For now, I haven't I haven't prepared the place yet until I get I get your approval and I'm gonna start work on it. Do what till what you uh, tell me to do. I will do. The fence is not a big deal to take off, and I'm gonna take the whole thing off if you if you want me to do that. It's not a big deal to do. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think you need to take the whole thing off. It's just right. You know, it's least. barely wide enough for one car, and if that was gonna be a place that. People were going to be pulling in and going out of. No, I will routinely. definitely. I plan hard. to take. I plan to take at least uh, uh, half of it. Uh, take okay. it. Out. That's all I. Can I ask Peter to explain the B zone, the B residential zone, and the status, and if it conforms to what we, uh, what our objectives are for that area. So the uh, B residential zone, like um, the other residential zones, uh, permit uh, home occupations under certain standards. Um, the only, st well, I shouldn't say the only standard, but the standard specifically that isn't being met here is the fact that uh, customers will routinely come to the location um, to be, you know, serviced um, uh, by the barber shop. So um, that's the primary conflict. Therefore, uh, un uh, the zoning officer could not approve it administratively. It had to come for a special permit. So um, that's how it uh, ended up in front of the commission. Okay. Based on the four additional parking places, it only complements the site and the needs that might be required for that site. There is existing parking uh, there now, but I think uh, in order to have uh, the f five total, uh, some level of uh, additional improvement would be required. So um, uh, as a condition of approval, if you're so inclined, that should be noted in the record. Many? I, I, You can get one in the driveway now safely. I think you can probably get three there now so you probably one and it's probably one and a half spaces i'm not sure right now it meets the full uh, width requirements for three spaces but um so um a total of five would be required i uh, oh, okay mr chairman um other than the parking the pavement that he does have in there is in great shape and uh, the area where he'd be parking uh once you go in the driveway you turn left and Park. It's about, as you say, three to four, maybe three and a half, so he might have to expand that. I have otherwise, him. I don't think he needs a lot more parking. You said five? So, and where does the five come when from? you're having maybe one, pe you need, one person at a time. Well, you need two for every single family residence, and then the additional f to service the business. Ah. Yeah, you have to factor in the single family. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a total rather than, you know, an overlapping. I mean, it, that's up to you as the commission to also determine the, the adequacy of, of that. So uh, in my memo, uh, I kind of left that uh, open for you to dis discuss based on the nature of the business. I mean, it's a one-man shop. Um, the car for his home is going to be in one of the spaces. So um, just keep that in mind. Yeah, okay. Um the uh, side bank is wood on it. Are you going to clean up the yard and do that kind of stuff? But getting the more serious things, uh, how are you going to access your house? Uh, but, I mean, well, actually where the garage is now, where the barber shop will be, there are steps into it, aren't there? Uh, to access my house from the, yeah, yeah there, is a, there is a door between the garage and the house. Uh, uh, there is a door. Does he have to have handicapped access into and out of the uh, I, I think the the entrance to the barber shop uh, will be handicapped accessible yes. at the same grade. Probably in the front. But right. he doesn't necessarily need it for the connection between the right. it's not, not, it's shop. Not the back entrance to the garage. Right. Okay. Uh, that answers that. Um, is the storage building going to stay? The what? I'm sorry. What? The, the storage uh, is storage it gone? building. The what? The, the storage building. The oh, shed. Okay. shed. It will stay. It will I'll, stay. It will you stay. can still do that with an ad 
if we think we need more parking you would De depending not. on the number that you arrive at correct I've seen I've seen uh, uh, one person operations and you know I know what you say the requirements are but uh, and uh, the you know I don't know if you need it but anyway um, well we can okay. ask him yes <laughs> What's that? We can ask him what his well, timing is and so forth. Yeah, what's your timing? And why don't you go through some of this, uh, when like, you're going to do it? And, you know. uh, I well, think what you meant was how many people will you have there at a time waiting uh, to justify one the chair, need right? for the parking It's one chair, one bar bar. People today, they don't like to wait long, you know, <laughs> really. <laughs> and there's yeah, so I, many people are cutting here now. So uh, once they see uh, two so people... So somebody or, might be sit. yeah, they won't wait. So right, people don't wait. Yeah. Right, really. So, so I don't know. Do you do by appointments, or do people just walk in? Right now, I, I walk in, walk in. Yeah. Good question. And it's and it's a full six days per week. Yes. Saturday, Sunday. The only day you don't open is on Monday. It's Monday. Yes. You don't want to take Sunday off. No, I, no. <laughs> So just for the uh, the record, there are three letters of support that I see here. One from the next door neighbor, apparently uh, Richard. Right. The, is it Pfeiffer? Richard, yes, that's my next door neighbor who will be attached to my parking, my parking. Uh, Even more. Okay. Area. So. And and the one I haven't submitted yet, that's his next door neighbor. The one I he, you haven't seen. He gave me that today. Uh, fair enough. Oh, so yeah, another one today? Yes, yes. Okay. If you could right. pass it down. Sure. I'll, I'll go through it. At 183 Beverly Road, Richard Pfeiffer in support. <clears throat> That's the one immediately next door to the driveway. And then another one from Charles Vincino uh, on Livingston Street. And another uh, Mr. Gout, Guilmet, uh, uh from Still, well, I've had it. Still, Still Wall Drive. Or more. And that one. And four more. And that one's five. Five more. One from uh, 179 Beverly, which must be another neighbor up. Yes, that's it. The next that one right? to the Who's from that? RD this is the next the, the next one attached Dibula? to my parking. There's one here is my house. Here's my parking. This next to the parking, one give me a lot of support and the one next to it. One seventy nine is the number one seventy nine, the one I just gave you. Is next is the second house next to me. There's Who's that now? Raul Rodriguez? No. Uh, RD, RD is the letter I just gave now. Yeah, RD Dabula. Yeah. Right. Okay. If you look right. in your package, you'll see. I uh, want to know that. It's in the packet. It's in the packet. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, another couple. Doggone it if I can pronounce that last name. Sekunjinen. Oh, the, Herman, the Rajas. Uh, yeah, those are uh, the people who own the salon across, the hair, the hair salon across uh, from across me. Across the street, okay. Yes. Another one from uh, Jeffrey Morissette. Yeah, the, on the fire, the fire, uh, uh, he's well known to every fireman. Uh, he's uh, head of a school. Of I, was, I was at his next door neighbor's house five minutes ago. And uh, another one from Har Jose Var Vargas, uh, address not provided. Okay, so there's a number of letters of support for this application. Six days a week, we heard 8.30 to 6 every day, Sunday, 10 to 4, no Mondays. Um, expectation with, regarding signage, what, what are the signing allowances? We do allow um, freestanding signage for uh, home occupations, assuming they have a, received a special permit. It's actually a pretty uh, um, significant sign. I think it's 12 square feet if uh, he's so desired. Uh, that would go through the um, zoning officer. And that's allowable? It's allowable. Yeah. Are you considering putting a yes. S yes, sign Yes, I, I will. Okay. Uh, 12 square feet? Yeah, let me check that. Hold on one second. Really? I should know that. All right, so <clears throat> while, he's, while he is looking up the signage, we have the issue of the parking lot and the condition of the parking lot, and what is it that we would expect to see of the parking lot? Um, what do we expect to see? Or? Or what yeah. improvements? Peter, will you make sure, though, he, he follows the rules on either any handicap? I don't think and you have a problem with the front, the way he's going to do it, and the painting of blinds and all that stuff. 
So the handicapped accessibility will be handled by the building uh, department at the time he applies for a, a permit to renovate the garage into the business if it gets approved. Um, the uh, striping of the parking and the final details of the parking, he's going to have to work out with, uh, with me and the town engineer, uh, once again, if you uh, approve it. Do you, do you see the problem with it being the three, whatever, you know, in there? You know, one way you could uh, resolve that, too, if there is a problem, is to have some appointments or require almost appointments. That's fine, too, but I, I don't think... We don't want to do that. Huh? I'm we sorry. don't want to do that. I'm not sure you really need it. But. No. No, okay. I have it's a, a lot of land. I have a big land. If I need to expand the parking, I, uh, I, I can. But well, you I can't pave your whole yard, though. Hmm? No, you can't pave the whole yard, so... No, it's um, not the yard. It's not the yard. I have, I have like 4,000 feet in front of the house, and I have like 4,000 feet in, in the back of the house where the a parking yeah. area would be. Could park out the, yeah, there is on-street uh, parking um, that during the day doesn't get... Okay. Uh, to answer your question, and you're not going to like this uh, answer, but uh, special permit uh, uses authorized by the commission can have a wall sign and a freestanding sign as large as 25 square feet. That's your regulations now. So depending on what you do with a later agenda item, you may or may not resolve that, but um, just, just FYI. Great piece of coming up, huh? There you go. Well, that's, that's for the future. This is I know what it is. So, so I suspect that as part of this discussion, we could put some constraints on that. Would, that you would could. Be other than, right? That's true. The other thing I did advise Mr. Omar is the fact, and we didn't ex talk about this at the beginning of the meeting, that um, given the low numbers uh, tonight, he would need five, uh, he, he would need everybody, since Tom's abstained, uh, to approve this in order for it to be, um, in order to go forward. The other thing uh, that uh, Mr. Omar did not mention, and I explained to him that on occasion, um, the commission will approve something like this for a certain period of time to get an experience with it. Um, he explained to me that he is investing fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in the renovation and would be um, uh, very nervous about a condition um, you know that required a potentially having it you know not renewed at some point in the future given the level of investment so that may be something you want to um, discuss as well. But I just wanted to make sure he didn't he didn't mention that yet, and we did have that conversation. <laughs> Thank you, because that was actually something that I was going to bring up eventually. Um, Has the salon in the other corner had limited restrictions? Because I don't think that's been before us at all. It's been it's been there before. I think it got a variance um, many years ago. Um, uh, their practice was at one point to to have those renewed, but um, it hasn't. I'm not aware that it's gone through. It's gone through. Tony, so it's I almost think that's been there longer than I've been on this. With a, quite a large sign on front. That's a long time. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so, um, is, so, is are you going to uh, you're going to clean, do some things to improve the appearance of the yard and everything? Because I will. Your neighbor across the street, they keep a good-looking property. I will. I, I have been. I moved to this house about only six months ago, five months ago, or six months ago. Take I've your been, time. Yeah, I've been yeah, working no. on it. Yes. Okay. He's busy cutting a lot of a lot of hair. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> six days and a trim week. Trim the tree. You, know, you might have trouble getting cars in and out of there. The limbs are growing down. So yeah, I'm working on it. Really, there That's was a lot. I, I did a lot to it. I'm still working on it. Yes. But your wife can continue to hang the clothes out, though. <laughs> is is there, you, any, is there anybody like from the public? I, excuse me. Is there, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this application? I'd like to say something about me. Please join us at the microphone. Hello, my name is Stan Walter. I uh, Would, originally from Kansas. I was in the military, in the Navy, and operating Sam, out of the Sam, Sam, could you join microphone. me at the mic, please? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, my name is Stan Walter. I uh, live in Rocky Hill, Waters Avenue. My wife is from Rocky Hill. I, I met her and married back in Connecticut uh, in 1968. I spent 12 years riding submarines out of New London, went back to Kansas, where I'm from. We lived there for about 28 years and moved back here in 05. Uh, 
we moved into the house that my wife grew up in, I, uh, I needed a barber, uh, and I came across Omar uh, a couple of years ago, and I've been very satisfied with his work. Uh, he's right now currently uh, renting a place in the old, uh, well, it's the, like you said. ShopRite. ShopRite, right. Shop right, right. Um, he has an opportunity. He's a, he's a one-man show. He has an opportunity since he purchased his home to accommodate a barber shop in that home. Uh, his intent when he and I have discussed this some was to make more parking available directly off the street. He will, intends to remove a tree, widen the parking toward the sidewalk from where the tree is. Then if the apron from the street up to the parking lot would be like a, it would be at least three cars, maybe four cars wide. And just when you turn on to Beverly off of uh, the Silas Dean or coming down Beverly into his parking would be a straight shot into the parking lot. He's, uh, thought ahead enough to figure out, well, it's, it's not going to be convenient for people to come in and drive around a tree and then have to drive it back out and then come back down to Beverly and leave, whether it be right or left. Uh, his intention is to make more parking available. I think his little shop would be, fit in that spot quite well, uh, and he can aboard, avoid excuse me, paying rent, which he currently pays, uh, I think it's $1,300 a month for a stall that really needs a lot of help. I think if he gets a chance to get a shop in his premise, on his premises, it will be a nice place, uh, low key, no noise. Uh, I don't think the parking with his parking lot uh, expectations should make it very easy for people to get in and out, shouldn't create a problem at all, slowing down traffic or impeding traffic whatsoever. Uh, that's about all I've got to say. As far as I know, this guy, he's a straight up uh, honest merchant and uh, just wants a chance to try to get a shop in his place so he doesn't end up paying rent for a shop and home payments to boot. Uh, that's all i got to tell you, other, other than the fact that I think, it, I think it's a good deal for him and the city of uh, Wethersfield. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Tom. <clears throat> This will be interesting. Uh, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road, formerly 77 Beverly Road. So I'm very familiar with the street and with the corner and uh, the business that used to be there a long time ago. And uh, I would hate to see the applicant denied uh, the, the uh, approval based on the adjacent business. Um, that whole area of the Silestine is somewhat residential uh, converted into businesses uh, in that area there. Um, and like the applicant said, you know, nobody waits around for a haircut anymore. I think uh, if somebody pulled up uh, Beverly Road and saw that the, there was two or three cars in that parking area, they'd just keep going and uh, come back later when it's not busy. So I'd hate to see you uh, put restrictions on his operation that would be uh you know too tough for him to handle that's it Thanks. tom i have a question for yep. you why does the barber charge you the same amount as he charges me well there's a lot more skill involved cutting your hair <laughs> he's got a voice good answer, like good answer. Thanks. Thanks. putting up with questions like that I <laughs> a little levity into the night <laughs> All right. I, any... I have an interesting point I want to make out to uh, our town planner. How come this property has one of the widest sidewalks in the town and that it's in great condition? Five foot wide sidewalk along his property. Which On the is... Silas Dean side or the Beverly oh, side? The Beverly Road side. I was kind of shocked by it, but it's kind of unusual because hmm. I've been doing a lot of walking in town and uh, I spotted that and that, that is quite unique nice and nice and roomy yeah, yeah. It's positive um, so hmm. okay so the things that I think um, I, I must admit that I'm a little is there anybody else in the public who wishes to speak all right thank you uh, no appreciate you reminding me to go back to it uh, I mean I'm I, 
as a as a commission, we are struggling with more and more of these things. And of all locations, I guess this is a respectable one to say okay to. I guess in my mind, but it does kind of concern me that the house still still faces Beverly, right? It's not facing the Silas Dean like the other mm, one does. Right. You know, uh, so when I first looked at it, I was a little concerned about it. But if all the neighbors are saying okay, and it used to have a business there, not that that matters, right? Um, so I'm still I'm still wondering whether we should be putting a time constraint on it if we were to go so far as to to approve this. Um, I do understand that it's a investment, right? But as long as this particular person had a permit for a period of time that you know is foreseeable for his use, it doesn't. Uh, well, actually, and, and so maybe the real answer is, as we approve this, it's only approved for a barber shop, right? So the next person is not going to use it as a hair salon with five chairs. So I think, yeah, I think you should be pretty specific. A barber shop with one chair, and if he wants to come back, if he ever, you know, then you review that again. So I think you want to be really specific because as a, you know, uh, it's a special permit, it runs with the property, so... Not that, you know, there's a one-man barber who's going to buy it in the future and uh, have more activity, but nevertheless, you may want to be specific on the conditions or, you know, as submitted, you know, with the hours and the one chair, it's, et cetera. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's kind of how I view it is, you know, what he is applying for, and as long as we grant exactly what he's applying for, I think it's pretty confined as far as the impacts on you know and the potential for expansion you know it's it's a one-man barbershop you know and, and I don't know whether we want to limit it to the you know the one space in the garage and four in the yard just to prevent things from you know getting out of hand in that direction but again um, you know to go, to go back to your first point um, you know I think if you're talking about an appropriate location on Beverly Road you know, for this kind of activity, I think this is it because, you know, right across the street is a similar use. Um, I forget what the street beyond that is, but, you know, that has the nail salon in the bottom of a house. And I, I think, you know, that one might also have been photography at some point, too. So, I mean, um, you know, it, it's it's not in the middle of a residential neighborhood. I mean, it's it's basically, you know, the you know, the, the border between residential and commercial and, you know, as long as, you know, as long as we confine it to what he has applied for, I, I think it's appropriate in that location and, you know, we don't need to worry about it too much in terms of duration mor morphing into something that we hadn't anticipated. Yeah, I don't think you know, we unless have there to worry about down the road. Massive the developments Rich, in the world of air parking spaces? Yeah. Well, one in front of the garage and four in the yard. Oh, yeah, no. one out in the street, you mean? No. But that's not his proposed site plan. It's yeah, it shows five one, total. One in front of the garage and four in the yard because the garage kind of goes down and the yard kind of goes up, so they're not the same. Oh. Okay. So do we have any more questions for the applicant? And we could talk through this after closing the hearing. Do we need more information? Yeah. Well, the only thing I, I want to add is uh, I agree with uh, Rich. I think we have, we do have the discretion, and we've got to use that discretion wisely. And you know, we have to look at the location and the type of use in the location. We can't have generalities that we're only going to approve A, B, C, D. These are the exact standards. Um, I, I think this is a is a location which is just off of Silas Dean Highway, it, which. It's not in the smack in the middle of a residential uh, neighborhood. Uh, it's a, an innocuous operation. As I said, there's a salon across the street. I think that we have plenty of discretion to say that this is an appropriate use for this particular location. And it may not be appropriate for other residential locations. And just leave it at that. What do people feel about the signage? Uh, I certainly don't like. Does like he have to come back for a separate approval for signage? Not, not to you. Um, he has to um, get a zoning permit from the zoning officer. But there's a lot of there's a lot of square footage there. Yeah, 25 is a uh, 
good, good size. Yeah. I mean, we, per we personally, have discretion on the uh, signage. Well, I suppose in theory, <laughs> as you um, you have the authority to approve it with modifications. So I, I would maybe think under that, uh, and also assuming maybe the maybe the applicant wants to explain to you what he had in mind anyway. And maybe that matches up with what, and that could be the condition. Um, you, you mentioned you would like some signage to promote the business. Had you thought uh, as far as what size and um, how? But whatever size is permitted, I will. So the the issue they have is what's permitted is a, a rel relatively large uh, wall sign and a freestanding sign. So they're concerned about giving you uh, 25 square feet on your house and then 25 square feet in the yard, um, I, I don't suppose you were thinking about that big of a sign anyway, but maybe had you thought about how big of a sign you would uh, be willing to, to live with so that they could incorporate that into a, a condition of approval? As big as, I, uh, as, big as <laughs> I'm allowed, I mean. <laughs> okay. as big, uh, what does the guy next door have? I mean, does it, does it face Beverly or does it face Silas Dean? And, and can we constrain that? Is, is the 25 that's allowed uh, going to allow him to put 25 facing Silas Dean and 25 facing Beverly? Uh, it would allow him to 25 on the house and then 25 in the yard somewhere. Um, so. Um, I don't like it. Yep. And you need five votes. So I'm, don't Omar, if we ask you to make it smaller, would you accommodate that? The sign on yeah. the house and, and in the yard yeah. and in the yard. Yes, I will. How big of a sign could you uh, you, you were th live, live with? I mean, what do you have now on the on the shop? How big of a sign do you remember? No, it's not here. I would say, what do you think? Uh, I really don't because I'm not good with measuring. Yep. But, uh, a twenty-five <laughs> foot would five be, by five would be five foot by five foot. Five that's foot quite by large. Five. You don't need one that large. Five foot by five foot. That's that's big enough. That's, that's very big enough. Large. That's, that's big enough. Yes. Fig five. That's why I'm against this. Too big. Are you so so? Are you going to uh, are against five yeah, by five? How about a three by uh, like a twelve square foot? Like a three oh. by four? Three feet or four feet by three? Even that's pretty big. That's good size. Three by that's, four. It's a big size. That's yeah. good enough. Yeah. That's good enough. Yes. Three by four. Three feet by four feet. I think that's reasonable. One. George. Right? One time, 12. Well, you need to put it on the house or in the yard. You yeah, know, you can put it on his choice. Which one he wants, right. Yeah, his choice. So three by four would be reasonable. Three by four? Yeah. Just one in the yard and one in the house? Or? So what kind of a house, I mean, what's the structure of the house? Is putting one on the house mean, thank yeah. you. Is it, is it a cape where putting one on the house means putting it next to your, bike. you know, your doorbell or is, put, you know, Mounting it on the roof. You would, you would probably put it, would you put it on the Beverly side of the house above yeah, the shop? Yeah, above the garage, right. Yeah, so he's got the one car garage facing Beverly. I don't think you'd have room in the front of it, do you? I'd put it in the yard if it was me. Yeah, I'd put I it on the Silestine Highway. I wouldn't, I would too. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it over the garage. I would in the yard. Freestanding sign that? in the yard? How about if I put in the yard one and big enough, the, the big, the, big the, the first measurement you mentioned, five by one, the bigger. I put it in the outside yard facing Silas D. Silas Dean? Oh, yeah. Uh, you right. right. So Just fly. one on Silas Dean, but big, uh, the, bi the biggest one per permitted. You sound like the man from City Fish. <laughs> so we could just consider 25 feet once or, or 25 feet and let him break it up. If you I, want you know, I just don't want him necessarily to have to come back if we. Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't come back to you um, normally. Um, so. For a change, like, for, like well, if oh, he you didn't mean like for a change? 12, if he didn't like the twelve, if he, if he decided that he really wanted fifteen, he'd be coming back to us, right? Yeah. Design review doesn't get in on any of this. Not stuff. residential. Okay. Where did well, you this is the sign at one ninety. Big that look. Is that the only one? Is there nothing in the yard? I don't know. That's the only one that shows up on the building. It looks like maybe like six, eight, or by one. Yeah. Yeah, say 10 square feet like total, maybe? Yeah. Well, what's the road look like? Oh, Christ. Yeah. How about not to exceed 18 square feet, or 20 square feet, or 15? George, what can you live with? 16 square feet. 
We're at 12 well, now. How did you get it down at 12 to 15? I 12 think. to 15, 16 uh, square feet, not to exceed 16 square feet. What are we 15 doing? square feet. Oh, this is his house. You have yeah, to have an opportunity right? to do business. Yeah. But you don't want it to be too innocuous. I mean, we are right. it's it's still, still, a still in a residential zone. zone. Yeah. Rich, that's quite something. large, isn't it, Rich? What? The one you're looking at next door? It, I mean, it looks like maybe like 8 by 2 or something like that. Well, that's 16. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd be so okay with 18, 15, 18 square foot max. Yeah. That sounds right to me. But I, it doesn't look like you'd want to put it on the side of the house. Yeah, you'd probably want the visibility on the side of the house. I, I, yeah. I put it in the yard, the traffic flow. in the yard outside, in the yard next to si the, the highway. Yeah. I put it outside in the yeah. yard. The traffic, I, think, I think that's where people can see it right from the side of the highway. I would do that, yeah. yes. All right. Yeah. All right. So... With that assumption, if it's probably going to end up in the yard. people are used to signage on the Silas Dean. Yeah. To say the least. Well, I think it's better on, on, on. That's what you wanted on the Silas Right. Dean. I will do that. Yes. I will do that. Thank you. Okay. Good question. Okay. 18, 18, 18, 18 feet is something that we were all thinking. Like all right. Right. Any other questions for the applicant? Or would I take a motion? I will take a motion. Motion to close the hearing. Thank Second. Seconds. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone oppose? Okay. That's 5-4. Tom, you're out. Would somebody like to try and craft a motion? Go ahead, Rich. <laughs> we talking before. I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. Yeah. I'll try. I'll okay. To approve application 1997-18-Z uh, in accordance with 3.5.2 home occupation of the Weathersfield zoning regs for 189 Beverly Road to have a, a barber shop for the hours of 8.30 to 6, um, Monday through Saturday, Sunday 10 to 4, closed on Monday rather, um, with five parking places as referenced in the site plan, the shed to remain, a one-chair barber shop as submitted within the application not to exceed signage of 18 square feet, uh, 18 square feet is the limit. Okay. And the sign to be in the yard. Sign to be outside on the yard. Sign. Yep. Okay. Second that. Thank you. Any need to Tony, can I ask a question? Sure, of course. His assessment will go up, right? Likely. Yeah, most likely. Likely. Being a business and the improvement. Yep, it would be declaring personal property yeah. for one chair. One chair. One chair. Plus whatever. Yeah. So if we wanted three chairs, George, it would be more revenue for the team. He's an assessing expert. He's so, in. so do we do we need anything in there that says the uh, the, the town staff will be involved with uh, defining the needs of the driveway? Final parking details. Final parking details, inclusive of town staff involvement. Yeah, I agree because I mean, I, good point. I, I think it's important to have that done correctly so that doesn't create a problem for his customers. Agreed. All right. Anything else that we think should be in there? Question. Another question. Not a hand. Yeah, you go, I, George, I can ask him a question. You can write him a letter. The hearing is closed. The hearing is closed. <laughs> you can get, you can get a haircut, George. Yeah, you can get a haircut. You you, he, the the chairman can allow in his good discretion that I can talk to him. Uh, the bank you're going to fix up, are you, you know, along the bank towards your neighbor? I'm sorry, say it again. So, yeah, you, well, you, you cut some bushes down there, didn't you? So I did, and I will. Yeah, I did. You're going to fix I that up. Oh, There's yeah. some rotten ties in there. I will, really. I will. Gonna, okay. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. so Peter, will, you'll have to work with Peter to get a final approval of what you want to do to the parking lot. That's I will how it'll it. work. I will do that. Right. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? Good thing, because you need all five. Okay. Thank Congratulations. You, thank you. And one abstention, so Tom. Thank, 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 thank you. you. Good luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so let's see. Next item. <clears throat> Application number 1805-13-Z, a special permit for St. Mary's non Non, did not, none. In an eye. Okay. Church at 648 Russell. What is it? I think it's Cananiah. Cananiah. <coughs> is the applicant here? Ah, join us. If you would introduce yourself and uh, remind us what you were doing and, and what you're asking for. 
Okay. Good evening, everybody. My name is Benny Joseph. I'm here with my church committee members to request the extension for zoning permit for our 648 Russell Road that is in Weathersfield for uh, building a church. Our building permit will expire soon. We got the permit on October 10th, 2013 for five years. I hereby request you to kindly extend the zoning permit and other existing permits for the maximum possible extension period. Thank you. Alrighty. So, so we are allowed to give an extension up to a maximum of 10 years. And so that is what the applicant is looking for. Um, in theoretic, theoretically, they need to start within 10 years. They don't necessarily need to be done within 10 years if we go this far. I believe the statute um, is to complete, um, let's just see here. Complete the public improvements. Complete the public improvements. So whether these are considered public improvements, but it's basically the work um, required by the, the approved plan. So um, they are, uh, at the first five years, so they're requesting another five years. Uh, and it, the way it's been explained to me, they are in the process of fundraising right. for the project and have not quite uh, arrived at the point of uh, having the resources to go forward with the construction at this point. So they want the uh, maximum amount of time um, to continue that fundraising and then also uh, try and complete the project. Okay. A question for yes. Peter. Uh, as I read the materials uh, for this application, my understanding was that the, the total aggregate period for uh, the approvals, uh, that the completion of whatever is required has to be uh, accomplished within 10 years from the original approval, you know, even with the extension, so that that's an aggregate period. So. We cannot extend this for 10 years. It can only be extended for a maximum of another five years. Is correct. That correct. So the specific uh, action is uh, an extension for five years, considering they've already had five years on the permit. Thank you. Yes. All right. Question. Yes. Um, it has nothing to do with this approval. It's my understanding that there's a new state law, and you that because the church is not there, it's land owned by the church, is that still taxable to, until the church is, is up and going? I'll defer to our uh, assess, assessing expert, as he was so referenced earlier. I think we'll have to refer to Fauna, who's the assessor for the town <laughs> of Weathersfield. Yeah, we are, we are actually paying the taxes okay. yearly yeah, for the land. I thought it's not up to us. but I know, because once it is selected as a non-profit organization, as a church, yeah. then we get exempted, I think. Okay. That's my understanding. And generally, it's the actual lease, but use itself, but it's uh, yeah. up to the individual think. assessor to approve that. That's not to do with my decision. I was just curious. Yeah, it's just vacant commercial. Um, okay. Any changes? Um, since the last, Peter, since the last uh, five years ago? The, to the original I mean, site plan? The original conditions, for example? No, I think um, those yeah, are especially all. Especially with the next doors being approved, uh, what, last meeting? Mm -hmm. No, I think, I mean, if they determine as they move the project forward that they need some changes, um, they can certainly come in and, and do so, but uh, we have not uh, had that conversation yet. And, and just confirm what was going through my mind. This is adjacent to the next door, to the uh, site we dealt with last time, or is there a park? No, there's a, there's a house, at least a, one house in between. There is, okay. Oh, there is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Not this is closer to the corner of oh, okay. Arrow than it is to the I wasn't here when Turnpike side. one of the few meetings I've missed, I think. Okay. I think it's one down from the Yeah, it's the one down. The, right. The yeah. self-storage. The corner, room. right. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion that we extend the deadline for completing the work for application 1805.13z for an additional five-year period. I'll second it. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> Any additional comments, questions? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thank you. All right. And good luck on the fundraising. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda. 
is taking a 15 minute break to watch the Red Sox or get an update on the Red Sox. No, uh, Red Sox leading three to two in the top of the seventh. There thank you. Yeah, thank you. Maybe we can get the TVs on. It. <laughs> <laughs> you care, Tom? How'd they get the. No, I do. How'd they get the extra run? How did both teams get the extra run? Anybody know? No. No? All right. Moving on to item 3.3, a public hearing for application 1996-18-Z. Town of Weathersfield. Peter's going to join us and tell us about a zoning text amendment. So we can <clears throat> need your guidance on how you want to proceed. I do have a, uh, a long and um, specific uh, PowerPoint if you'd like to do that or if you'd just simply like to uh, discuss we're missing, um, you know, a significant number of members, so I would not uh, expect to get through this and uh, uh, have a vote tonight. Uh, I do have a PowerPoint, which does have some photos of different sign types. It may or may not be more helpful than just the uh, narratives you have in front of you, so I defer as to uh, how you would like um, to go forward tonight. Didn't we have a discussion on this in a preliminary manner? We have discussed this uh, a couple of times, yes. Yep, with all the pic with all the pictures of the different sign types and stuff. I don't know if we got into all of those, uh, but we definitely you have seen these um, this final draft uh, at least once before. Um, we can take a you know a couple minutes and um, recess, and I can set up the laptop and and drop the slides if you think that's uh, uh, more beneficial than just kind of going through this page by page. It's really up up to you. Uh, before we undergo that exercise. Uh, since we have reviewed the, the draft in the past, uh, there were a few corrections or adjustments that uh, the commission had, had, um, uh, re you know, had recommended be accomplished in this. Uh, I'd like, I think it served more uh, use for us to uh, you know, look at those and uh, uh, and for me, the critical thing was the review by the town attorney who indicated that this was uh, uh, conf in conformity with the uh, U.S. Supreme Court decision that kind of governs this, this matter. Yeah, I, I certainly, uh, or I tend to agree that um, I don't want to sit through a long PowerPoint if we're only going to catch half the commission, right? And it's sure. a significant enough issue where I think we should have it on a night when more people can attend, yep. um, which you can never know ahead of time, but it's also kind of nice that it's on a short mm -hmm. evening too because it deserves some attention. Others kind of agree we should kind of short circuit it and, and wait for the full presentation? Agreed. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, so I do have comments, some specific Tom? comments. Tom, yeah. Tom just asked about, you know, the lawyer. So let's, let's yep. jump into that one. So you do have, uh, you did get a, a copy of an email that he had provided to me uh, quite some time ago. Um, uh, he had been provided with the entire draft uh, and reviewed it, and uh, as was stated, uh, we do have an email in, in the record saying that it's, uh, as far as his, he is considered compliant uh, with the uh, content neutrality, which is one of the, the main topics that we are attempting to uh, resolve here. So um, so there are, if, if we want to just simply go through uh, page by page, if you have, um, you have uh, notations that you want to, um, uh, provide to me uh, that would give me also time between now and the next meeting to come back to you with some um, with some uh, revisions or some explanations uh, on page one I did get a comment um, from the zoning officer on uh, the definition of detached sign there is some language uh, on page one at the very big second line of the definition of detached sign where it, it says the base of the sign structure is no more than 12 inches above the lowest point uh, of the ground adjacent to the sign. He was inquiring as why uh, that was, and primarily that was to uh, avoid um, having um, lollipop pole type signs um, so that the actual uh, thickness of the sign is closer to the ground so you don't have you know, the message starting you know, three feet off the ground with this long pole and uh, so that was the intent as to why that 12 inches was um, included uh, in that definition of detached sign. Did anyone have any questions on page two? On page three the zoning officer uh, also questioned why 
under the definition of projecting sign that there is a um, limit on how far a projecting sign can um, project from a building of 18 inches. He thought that maybe should be um, expanded, you know, to 24 um, or 30. Um, is that based on something, or it's a, it's I I think it's what we what you might have now in terms of how far off of a, a wall sign can actually. But projecting signs are a wall sign, but they're different than um, you know a traditional wall sign where you actually want them to project. So his comment uh, is potentially valid that we might want to. Uh, expand that eight, 18 inches to be something more than that. Well, I think the way it's written, it has to be at least 18 inches, but it could be 60 inches off the sign. I mean, that it's not not the limit. It's not no more than right. It's you know basically it it's projecting at least yep 18 inches from the wall. Oh, okay. My concern in total. that 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 particular issue, Peter, is more uh, structural and safety. Is it you know how uh, I'd kind of like to have the, you know, the town engineer or building official uh, take a look at that to see uh, you know, how sound that is, given you know the uh, you know the probability of, of uh, severe storms, uh, including severe hurricanes that may come through this area uh, in the future. Okay. Given the mat so I can talk to the building official as to what um, level of uh, code. Uh, applies to something like that. Yeah, I, I think you know, yep. maintaining it, its structural integrity is the critical issue for sure. that particular item. Okay. Anything? Um, six. Page six. 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 Yep. We got on six. So, prohibited signs. Yes. So all those signs are prohibited unless otherwise permitted. Yes. Permitted in a permanent sense or permitted as a temporary situation? Um, I guess I some would. of these are temporary, some of these are permanent. So uh, when, I, when they refer, uh, unless otherwise permitted, it probably should be clearer you know, elsewhere in these regulations or something like that. Um, that's the intent anyway. Because honestly, I was trying to figure out in here, do we allow the blade signs? Do we allow string pennants at any point in time? Is it a, is there, do you envision that that's allowable under a temporary sale, two week maximum type of a situation? The way this is written, that, the answer to that would be no. Exactly. Yep. And, and so no blades, no streamers. Correct. That, that was our intent. Yep. Okay. These are absolutes. No roof signs. Um, no signs, you know, being carried around by somebody on the sidewalk. Um, no vehicle signs. However, there are exceptions to that, which are spelled out below. So yeah. the way it's written, there are certain provisions that allow them. Um, you can have a, so for example, on the pole signs, um, uh, you can have a pole sign. Usually there are directional signs for driveways, yeah. uh, as long as it's no more than four feet in height. So there are some um, aspects to that that it would be permitted. So I also noticed, because we've kind of rolled on to page seven, mm -hmm. permanent window signs, internally illuminated. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really ever describe window signs, except at some point you say 25% of a window coverage, right? There's a definition, I think, of window sign. Um, yeah, and I think somewhere else, yep. somewhere else deeper into this thing, it talks about window signs and no more than 25% of the window. Yep. So there's a definition of window, and then there's a uh, limitation on window signs, I think, in at least two different cases, because permanent ones are permitted in, in a certain case, and then the temporary ones can cover uh, no more than 25% of a window or a glass door, that kind of thing. So I didn't see a permanent one, I think, is All right. what my question was. Okay. So let me um, see if I can find that. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Um, D5 on page 7, um, what's the ASHTO uh, distance at corners? In other words, uh, signs and or vegetation, is that that 30-foot 
or 15 feet or whatever. What the heck is it? Um, I've heard stories on you're not supposed to have plantings. I, signs, I assume, right. we're trying to apply something along the same lines. So it's interesting that you should know that the 30 or the 15 feet, but yeah, that's effectively the starting point at the driveway. But it's not, we typically don't apply the 30. It's more like 15 feet. And it's basically the length of the front of your car. And it's a triangle. That's what he says. Now that's it's a for triangle. state highways, right? Well, in theory, it's every road. If you think about it, your car pulls up to the edge of the road, and your and your eye is 15 feet back, and you should be able to look down the road a certain distance in order to see a car I'm, coming at 30 miles an hour. I'm very concerned with this triangle. because I know throughout towns, I thought we had a 15 or 30 foot at, in days years ago when I first encountered it, and I haven't seen it since. And People do plan on corners because they don't like people walking across their well, lawns on corners. Right, and, and don't but forget they shouldn't be doing it. Well, don't don't forget if you own it, you get to do it. Yeah. You know, you don't always own it, either the town or the st or the state. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I was asking about it. Yeah. I don't have anything else on seven. Okay. Keep going. Yep. So I'm good until 10 and 11. On page 8, there should be a little change under the subsection F. It says signs not requiring a sign permit in any zone. Um, the any zone portion should be, this is on page 8, uh, section F. The any zone portion should be removed because as you read below, it gets specific about different kinds of zones. And then the, the second paragraph below that also says in any zone, so that should also be removed. Uh, one thing I didn't know if you would find this helpful, um, rather than going back and forth between the existing and the proposed regulations, whether it would be helpful to have a um, table that shows the difference between the old regulations and the new regulations in terms of square footages and things like that. Yes, um, I think so. It's very kind of okay. hard to read this okay. stuff. And, and I hate to say it, but it gets boring for me. It gets very boring. So. Uh, I've been living with this for a while, so uh, I can I can sympathize with your boredom. But yes. all right, so I'll let's stick to the major ones, though. You know, yeah, that's not every last right, one. not everyone, right. not everyone, but the main yeah. ones. No, it's vastly more interesting than the site plan requirements that we looked at most of the month. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Page nine, anything? Uh, I got nothing on nine. Okay. Uh, where are we? Page nine, nine, ten. Nine. Nine. No, yeah, good. Um, on uh, C, yard sign or banner. What page? Thirty-two square feet. What page are you on, George? I'm sorry. Nine yard signs. Oh, C. Personal events. So you, those are what. Remember the, um, you know, at, at graduation time, yeah. people put those big sheets. Yeah. Congratulations, you know, Becky. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. WHS. They leave them up for a long time. These yeah, those days. are. Uh, the those only are thing they don't summer. leave, they leave up longer now are the flamingos. But other than that, yep. seriously, back Let's to the signs. Quickly, the flamingos are right. Be so these would, this regulation would change that. It would establish a size, but it would say they could be up for no more than thirty days. How's, is that reasonable or? Yeah, that's that's yeah. good. Okay. I was just saying the thirty-two square feet. Of well, the, some of those, some that's of those are, yeah, they're that big. The sheets. Yeah, that's, that's the reason. They are. That's right. Like queen size. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, size. thirty days for those. Yeah, that's a, okay. Yeah, fine. Okay. Yep. I built a couple of those. Uh, yeah. Queen size myself. Right. No, I wasn't going to go out and buy separate sheets. I was just going to use the ones we had lying around. <laughs> <laughs> priorities. Priorities. So, so queen fits and king doesn't. Yeah. You have to cut so, holes in them for the wind. wind anyway, otherwise, yeah. you get the. What are you doing? You getting ready for Halloween right. or something? Page ten. No, I put up a couple. So, of those so this was my question yeah. about the the blades and on the page ten. The, yep. Ba the the banners and yard signs. Yep. Allowed as a temporary. Yep. That does not include streamers. That's or correct. Blades. Blades. Cetera, signs, right? right. Okay. So, anybody else got anything on ten? Eleven, and this is where the question of my temporary versus permanent window signs and whether it needs to be clarified? I this thought I, I could have sworn I had something. I had something. Um... So maybe there isn't such a thing as a temporary window sign anyways, right? But well, I think we didn't want anything such as a permanent window sign. Yeah. Well, that may be fine, right? Right. But I was just asking. It was yep. unclear to me 
Um, and I don't know if it, you know, maybe it's just me too. So that would that um, came to my mind, anyways. Yeah, because most of the well, they do spend money. So Pat, let's talk about liquor stores, for example. Mm-hmm. They have the uh, neon, you know, brand signs in the window. Yep. They do change those, so they're, they're you know they're not outside, and they do kind of rotate depending on uh, the flavor of the you know week or whatever. You make me laugh when you talk about the liquor store. Yeah, so they um, cover their front windows. That's the standard practice. Mm-hmm. Right, definitely. So, and and I don't mind you know calling them temper and yep. giving twenty five percent. Yep, it, it implied just because it had temper that yep. maybe there's a permanent. Okay, but I didn't see permanent. Yeah, I look too. I'll, as we go forward, I'll keep my eye out for that. Well, if it's not there, it's prohibited. That's right. Fair enough. Okay. Yep. Okay, I said that before. Um, okay, you already answered this question about the blades. Yep. I don't think uh, so I don't think I have anything until maybe 13. Um, and it's more of a question. Um, it, it talks about you're not putting signs up high on buildings. Yep, that's right. Right, we have that today. Mm-hmm. Yep, we, we have that today. What happens to those? So the so you're talking about, for example, like uh, the Putnam Park, where they've got the sign way the wall sign way up high. Um, Rental numbers. Phone phone numbers. At least they used to be up there. That may have been on the building. Which that's which under. project? You, which building you're talking about? It may actually be you know the building that's part of um, the new residential on Silas Dean. Wasn't didn't one of those buildings up there have a phone number across the top floors for rental? Well, that was like twelve twelve ninety, I think. Had had banners <coughs> hanging over it with the rental. Oh, I, I think we rental phone number. Yeah, that's in healthcare. Okay, as no, long as they're not there now. No, the, the oh. taller office building. Okay, no, they're not there now. They do have a sign up there now, Hartford Healthcare, but. Um, all right. Looks reasonable. To me. I was actually thinking on page fourteen that the barbershop would end up with four square feet. On page fourteen, let me see. So he would that would be a a permanent detached sign. No, that would be in a residential zone. So. Uh, let's see. Yeah. It's an interest. So he would be, he wouldn't be a legally existing non-conforming use. That's a good question. I don't know how they would fit. That's a good, no, good point. The four. Which one are you looking at? Two. On page 12 still? In the, no, I'm 14. In excess? 14. Oh, on 14. I'm sorry. To be in the box. Permanent wall sign. Is that what it was? Oh, yeah, that's a wall sign. No, he, uh, no, he, a uh, principal use, well, it's not a principal use, an accessory is four square feet, such as a home occupation. That's just a wall sign. Um, so I was going backwards looking at detached sign. 2E would be the same four square feet. Accessory use four square feet. Yeah, two by two. So he made so up pretty on, well. I was going to say, based on what we just did, what does that mean? Well, actually, it's less than what he could have had, but yeah, timing was everything. Exactly. All right, so we're on page 14. Um, yeah. So I'm sure you struck. I'm on 15 now. 15. If anybody else has anything. Mm-hmm. On 15, I'm sure you struggled with this. This is the uh, the timing of a what's a considered motion. Yes, yeah, so electronic six. changeable message sign. A display change between messages that take place in this number six point two five seconds or less is not considered motion or should it be more so you don't have to answer it it's mm-hmm. one of those thought-provoking things you go okay. oh, god <laughs> we did a lot of uh, we did a lot of research on this so i can um dig up that research and <laughs> well i think that would be a sign that just kind of like slowly right fades its message right. rather than you know, changing the picture instantaneously. Yep. You ever get a so, complaint about so it's uh, changing instantaneously? Fish? I didn't think you would. Nope. Yeah. Probably got pretty. All right, I circled it. I'll, you circled uh, it. I'll right. bring it back. I'll talk about it the next time. Yeah. Okay. I think that's actually it. Well, I think. I think the idea is that we want the picture to change instantaneously yes. rather than 
kind of like slowly fade off and oh. turn into something else. Okay. Yeah, and, because but you're then motion. somebody might stop their car or slow down because it's not changing fast enough. Uh, is there something else that says, but it'll be up there for five seconds? 12 seconds. 12 seconds, fine. Okay. Um, so thank yeah. you for that clarification. That's probably all I no, needed. I'd kind of forgotten about it, but now I remember that that was a lot of discussion that we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are. Yeah, okay. Mucho. I'm not sure it was ever so. Any other comments for Peter on this thing? And um, we'll wait for a more detailed presentation when we have a full crowd. I think you only have one um, application at the next meeting, so um, we should have time, assuming we have a full crowd at the next meeting to, to get through this. Okay. Are you meeting on the Tuesday or the Wednesday? We're meeting on the Wednesday uh, after Election Day. Okay. You guys, not sure they heard that. Wednesday after Election Day, not on Election Night. Next meeting. Yeah. Keep that in mind. It's a Wednesday. Next meeting. Want to go through this with the overhead and all that yep. stuff? Yep. Well, he'll plan on it, but I'm just telling you, the meeting is Wednesday. Heads up. Huh? Yeah. yeah, Wednesday. You know, yeah. My my only concern is that. We had very, very little input from the public, even when we had the committee. We had a member of the Chamber of Commerce. And my concern is that we're going to adopt this thing, and all of a sudden we're going to get bombarded with uh, people. I didn't know anything about this. I haven't been given an opportunity to respond, and all that kind of stuff. That's my only concern. So just to that point, I attended several Chamber of Commerce meetings to let them know um, that we were going through this process. Um, John Zubretsky, just for the record, uh, was appointed as the Chamber of Commerce participant. He probably attended about half of the meetings, I think, towards the end. Um, we, uh, I did ask, uh, and I provided the Chamber of Commerce with a copy of the existing regulations as well as the proposed regulations. They sent out a broadcast email to their membership. Um, and as you can see from the audience, um, I also I did send a copy of the draft regulations to several uh, sign companies that work um, frequently in town. I also sent the regulations to um, Steve Knightitz, the owner of Weathersfield Shopping Center, um, the owner of Golfbrook Shops, the owner of the Marshalls Plaza, the developers of the Borden. Uh, Colvest, who owns a couple of shopping centers in town. So I did uh, specifically go out of my way to send uh, the draft regulations to those major property owners in town and uh, got very uh, limited comment. Uh, really, all they had were uh, primarily just questions about how a certain provision uh, would be interpreted. So um, I don't know if that's a reflection that nobody's here of us having, you know, reached out already and nobody has any um and you deal with these shop shopping center people all the time yes and they could bring it up in other conversations yes so um i'd appreciate if you would elaborate that in the in the minutes so sure we have a record of sure. what you just said you know this evening yep because um just for that reason well and i think uh you know if you're, you're keeping this open for another couple of weeks so maybe you know that will uh get get it on somebody's radar and they will um, spend some time uh, researching. Uh, I'll check. I'll, I don't know if this, I think this version is on the website, but I will check again and just see if it was posted uh, on the, we did set up a web page for the sign subcommittee as we were going forward. So a lot of the information was put out there before. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know why it, it isn't, you know, these regulations are um, providing um, additional sign opportunities that don't exist today, so they're being they're more generous, I would say, by you know just generally characterizing them in many areas. So maybe, you know, maybe that's why you, they didn't you, you haven't gotten a lot of uh, criticism yet. So yeah, but yeah, not, we're not going to look like Times Square. That's for sure. That's correct. Oh, that's all I just wanted to. Yep. No, I hear. no, and I, 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 I think your your last comment is is the key one, and you know, Dan, you were at all the meetings as well. I mean, we kind of took what we had and and went with you know at least the maximum and in some cases where our current maximum didn't really make sense or in a lot of cases didn't look good 
you know, we made it even a little bit bigger. But we also, I think, you know, tried to make things more rational in terms of, you know, what we were looking at and, you know, uh, frankly, as annoying as the Supreme Court case was, I think it, it forced us to sort of look at, you know, the, the size and shape of the signs rather than 800 different permutations of what the message was and, you know, who could put it where and for how many days and, and that sort of thing. So I, I think, you know, the, the, the revised regulations are more generous, but they're also more rational. It's rational, and the idea was, at least from my perspective, and I, I know from Rich's as well, is we did not want to prevent uh, commercial signs. We want people to do well, our, our business people to do well in town, but at the same time, uh, we're looking at the, the way uh, the town of Wethersfield appears, and we have to bring our regulations up to what other towns require as well. Uh, and it's going to prove the, uh, the overall image of the town. Uh, I, one of the uh, things I remember the most at, at one of the subcommittee meetings, and it came from a design review committee member, was that uh, she felt that many of the signs that we've approved over the years are actually too small to be legible to a motorist on the Silas Dean Highway. So then we got into looking at the formula, So um, and we looked at some real-world examples of uh, larger signs than the regulations permit, and you know, quite frankly, they are more legible. So that kind of guided a lot of the conversation from that point on. That you know, our existing regulations uh, limit the uh, visibility of some of uh, some of the signs, even close to the to the highway. So, well, they can't go 15, 60 miles an hour down the Silas Dean and see any kind of sign. I mean, that's the problem. So would uh, somebody help me with a motion on the public hearing? 3-2, top of the eighth. Well, does Tom want to say anything? Three, two, I mean the public? The yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. If you don't mind. Yeah, no. Questions? Uh, how do you go about enforcing the new regulations and also the existing ones? Um, so say you have a window front on the South Sea Highway and it's all cluttered. That rule has, isn't changing, so they're technically having, they should be living with the 25% now, so that would still be, an, from my point of view, an enforceable situation. Uh, it can be as much as $150 a day. That's correct. Yep. So, as a taxpayer, do I have to drive around and give somebody a list of all the signs that are probably not in compliance? Or does somebody just do that routinely? Uh, the zoning officer and the assistant building official actually went out this morning to do that. They do it on a somewhat regular basis. However, if you do have addresses specifically, uh, when they are out doing their inspections and someone could provide them because they're they don't go to every street they don't um, and they But they have to be on their property. They, if they're in the right of way, they are technically um, fair game for either the state DOT or for our staff to remove from the right of way since it's public uh, domain. So, um, in both of those cases, they were involved in enforcement action for both of those that you mentioned. Okay, 
do, do, you, do, you have, do, you, do you have a lot of them? Because actually, um, let me do. Let me just come back to you as part of public comment. Oh. Is that a, so, because we have a couple of people that would care to go. Okay, right. just bear with us. So, I, we have an open hearing. Somebody make a motion on the public hearing. Why don't, why don't we just suspend the public hearing right. for one minute to do the minutes, and then can we go if, back? If we can do that, that's fine. Yeah, I make a motion to recess the public hearing. Second. And um, address item five for the convenience of commissioners who have to leave. Okay. Which is the minutes. Item five is the minutes. Are there any comments on the, uh, on no. the minutes? No. I make a Judge. motion to approve the minutes. All right. Thank Second. you. Second. Thank you. I All, wasn't here. That's correct. So there's only five people who are here, and uh, and we needed, we needed Mr. Silver. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. So you have five people approving the minutes. See you, Dan. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's go back to the public hearing. 1990, 1996, 18Z. Tom, go ahead. Oh. I to close that. No, we'll just keep going. We'll just keep going. No, I didn't want to close it since we have to continue it anyway. Um, yeah, right. Temporary signs. There, is there a limit of the size of the temporary sign? Yes. Depends on the temporary sign. Okay. Um, let me throw out the example of board. Do those eight signs? Yes, they got approval. Sign? They got approval as a temporary sign, and they meet the square footage requirements. And is temporary going to be like two years? Temporary is probably going to be uh, at least a year. That's what we gave them time timeline-wise. Definitely. Well, political signs are sort of hands off. The um, there's there's limits in the existing regulations, and there are limits in the new regulations. Um, so it depends on, but the whole area of you know freedom of speech and yeah. you know is uh, is a real uh, sticky one. You can establish some limits on them. We have so. Uh, remains to be seen whether they would stand the test of time, but we think there what's in this draft is a reasonable compromise. Yeah, I mean the the premise is that on political signs you can't be any more restrictive than you are with any other kind of sign. So, you know, if you allow the warden to have a 32 square foot sign, you can have a 32 square foot political sign. And then there's wording like after. If it's on private property, we won't pull it down because it's private property. But if it's within the, it shouldn't be in the right of way. So if they are. Say it's a political sign that's in private property. Uh, but it's long I, don't, overdue. I don't think we would ever have the authority to go on private property and tear it down. We would issue, if it was in violation, we would issue a directive to remove it. And if they didn't, we would escalate that. And so there's a process, but we would not physically unless a court gave us authority to do that. But you would, in the manner of doing your business, if you saw the sign, you would take some action? Sure, if it or violated the, yes. Some complainer like myself would have to keep bothering you. But it, it is helpful to get those um, so that, because as I said earlier, our guys aren't everywhere and they don't, you know, so. Um, Aren't the political signs pretty well gone, though, within a couple of weeks after elections? Yeah, there's a few Bernie Sanders signs out there. Seriously, still? Yep. Yeah, I mean, up in New Hampshire, there's still some Trump signs. Oh, yeah. You know, actually, that up until a few months ago, there was a Ron Paul sign that had been up since 2012. And one of the <laughs> people near us. So. <laughs> Yeah. The zoning officer could be busy just doing that every day, unfortunately. Yeah. It's, and it's the same issue in every town. 
Rocky Hill just went through changing their regulations for temporary signs in Newington, had a moratorium on them. So uh, it's every town, it's everywhere. It's, you know, it's basically visual pollution. So. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Would you care to make a motion on the hearing? I uh, make a motion that we continue the public hearing on application 1996-18Z until Wednesday, November 7th, 2018 at 7 p.m. here in the town council chambers. Second. Thank you both. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. <clears throat> All righty. Um, Minutes done. Staff reports. Anything else? Oh, you do have some correspondence. Is that uh, uh, just under staff reports? Um, uh, we had a uh, groundbreaking today for the uh, Borden project. Um, also, this morning I was at Lucky Lou's with the sound uh, engineer doing the long-awaited uh, testing. So we'll see the uh, results of that shortly. Just in time for the season to end. Exactly. So, um, what was the result? Nothing yet. Right? I haven't seen all Did of the. Report? Yeah, they were doing different sound and then testing. You and didn't get a feel for. Or? Um, no, not yet. I, I I will wait the final technical report. Lou hit me one time when I walked in there, uh, like a month or so ago. Physically you hit gotta, you. You got to <laughs> speak up, George, and he still really read me on it. He's, he's quite mad about the whole thing, as I think he is in general. And, and I'm mad because I don't like the cops going down there and having to do tests. So they, if you stop them from doing that, or you can't. If there's I mean, a complaint. It's taxpayer money. That's the way I look at it. Uh, I'm sure there are other complaints that are probably wastes of taxpayers' money. But if there's a complaint, they have to investigate it, well, and they, they have they, to, per the town ordinance. So. Yeah. I know. That's, that's what I tell Lou. That's the behind my thinking more than worrying about him and his giving me hell, put it that way. So um, seriously, um, I hope that's resolved. So once I get the report, I will forward it to the commission and you can decide if you need to have a further meeting on the subject or See, bring Lou here with the, everybody and go through all this again. I really hope they can resolve their differences somehow. What else? Anything else? If not, motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Thanks, Tom. All those in favor say aye. 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 All righty. Oh, um, do I have to go to DOT on this last thing we got in there? Slap up a five. Yeah. Eight. Slap up a five run. What yes. is it? Eight to two? Red Sox just got five on the top of the eight. And I'm not, wow. re and I'm not recording it. Oh, nice. Wait. Do we, how do you get information on something like that? To come? <clears throat> uh, what do you want to know? It's a resurfacing job on I-91. Is that all a South, resurfacing job? All no all widening? That's no all resurfacing. Work? That's, that's all. Really? Yeah. I thought they are going to.